Helping you live healthy with gyms now reopening, it might be time to get rid of what's been dubbed as the quarantine 15. Yeah, you probably know what I'm talking about. A new study found 47% of women and 22% of men report gaining weight due to COVID-19 restrictions. Most say the gain was minimal. About 75% reported going up one to nine pounds. Joining me now this morning with more is Dr. Hussein Abbas, a bariatric surgeon at Memorial Hospital. Dr. Abbas, thank you so much for talking with us this morning. Thank you, good morning. Many, re people, many people are reporting binge eating during quarantine out of boredom. What has been your experience with talking with folks? That's absolutely true. Actually, you're spot on. So what's happened is, um, you know, multiple reasons why people have been either binge eating or snacking. You know, they're stuck at home. Um, the kids are running around, so there's a stress of that. And there's also the stress of working at a home. You know, nobody's really used to being stuck to the um, to your laptop, to your desk at home, where the kitchen is like 15, 30 seconds away. So they obviously keep going back and forth to the kitchen. And in times of stress, we do tend to revert to high carbohydrate or high sugar uh, meals. Um, so what I've been telling people is really that starts with your shopping list. You know, I make sure that I tell them to write on top of the shopping list, be smart, make wise choices. Because if that food is not in your cupboard, you will not be eating it. So it starts right there with your grocery list. Absolutely. You know, speaking for myself, when I go grocery shopping, I spend a lot of time in the produce section Correct. and I buy all of these leafy greens, grapes. I have grapes actually right here next to me. Um, and then I find when I get home, I'm not going to the refrigerator to, oh, to get those treats. I'm going to the cupboards and pulling out chips and crackers <laughs> and That's right. things that I shouldn't be doing. What do you have in mind to suggest to those people like myself who really don't have good restraint when it comes to snacking and making that right decision. So you see, th these are all habits, and it's two habits. One is psychological and kind of social, and the other one, of course, is biological. So we're made to actually want to consume these uh, types of foods, high, fast, you know, refined sugars that we can use immediately. The problem with that is you get a little high after you actually consume them because your sugar levels go up very fast, but then very soon after that, you get a little dip because your body's trying to correct that. So what you do is you go back for another snack to try and get that because you're gonna feel exhausted and tired. So you go back to ha trying to have another um, snack. As you said, you know, trying to eliminate some of those is the most important. Usually what works, things like, for example, if you, if you pick something like a carrot, um, you know, that's chewy. That keeps your mouth kind of chewing in your mouth. And it also has a little bit of sugars. So what that would do is that will take your mind and also feed your brain that sugars that it needs. And it really, it takes about four to six weeks to break these habits. So it's not gonna be very easy. Um, as you said, we sometimes pick the right food, but we still revert to what is left over in the cupboards and those, again, refined carbohydrate sugars. Um, so start with very small changes. Um, eliminate that, because now if you go back to try and find them, they're not there. So then you'll have to go back to eating healthy snacks. I also find that it helps too when you clean the produce immediately when you buy it. So later there are no excuses as to why you can't Correct. pick the grapes. Great They're clean tip. versus, you know, going to uh, the cupboard and exactly. opening a bag of chips. Um, any advice on minimizing portion sizes with meals? That's very important. You know, one of the extremely important things is not to have lots of food on the table and kind of like keep taking it and putting it on your plate. When you're having a meal, have one meal. So roughly I say split your plate into thirds, you know, have your carbohydrates, have your leafy vegetables, mm -hmm. and also have your protein. So those are very important, but do not go for seconds and thirds. So when you prepare or have a meal, have your plate and sit down and do not have any more. For example, don't have a little pot or a pan in front of you because then you lose count. And then you could end up having three or four more portions than you actually wanted to. So that's very important. 
one plate, one time for one meal. And many glasses of water, I, I mean. Absolutely, for. yes. Yeah. Either, I would say drink water before mm -hmm. or wait for at least 30 to 40 minutes and then consume your water. Very good information, Dr. Boss. We could talk about this all day long. Come back soon and we can pick up this conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.